Welcome to Interceptor Beyond Podcast. My name is Arthur, and today on the episode we have the one, the only, the Tiger Lilies. This band is really cool. Anyways, don't forget to follow this podcast on Spotify or any platform if you dig it, and rate this show on Spotify and Apple Podcasts. Last time I said Podcasts, so I'm sticking with it. Podcasts. Anyways, let's talk to the Tiger Lilies. My introduction to uh, to the uh, Tiger Lilies is I heard uh, the music sometime in 2003, four. I heard the Bully Boys, and this song actually scared me. Uh, and actually, the whole band scares me. It's 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 a scary band. It's an unusual band. It's uh, uh, you you don't. Uh, it's completely unique band. The music is completely unique. I would think so, and that's what I like about it. Um, so at the moment you are right uh, in the middle of touring, right? You're and you're coming in to Vienna, Austria in April. That's right. Yeah, a couple right. of nights at Mood. Oh, no, a couple of nights at Porgy and Bess, I think. Yes, you have two nights in Porgy and Bess uh, in April of, on April 13th and 14th, and then you go to St. Pölten, and Salzburg, and then Bahn Schallerbach, and then Innsbruck. So that people can buy tickets. Actually, there are no more sitting tickets at Burkin Bess. Uh, there's only standing tickets, so it's uh, almost sold out. Good. Oh, that's nice. Good to know. Yeah. Uh, what are you going to play? Uh, oh, old songs. Old songs. Old songs, yeah. right. Old the songs, hit, yeah. The oh. hits. Yeah, well, well yeah. Hits. Yeah, some of, some of the hits, yeah. Yeah. All the, the misses. <laughs> I heard that you never rehearse uh, for the show. Uh, well, no, we do a bit these days, a little bit. We we do not n- not very much, but we do rehearse more. But we, we we do, don't we? I mean, Back I think me when, when we used to do like <laughs> a couple of hundred gigs a year, rehearsing was a bit kind of a impossible to even fit in, and b we were just kind of continuously playing. Whereas now, you know, things are not we're not quite as relentless in our touring schedule. I think you know when we're doing different shows, we try and at least kind of, you know, put in a bit of rehearsal time so that we're, you know, so we, we feel more relaxed when we're on stage. I mean, yeah. I think just we, we, we used to be really crazily busy and it just was pointless rehearsing because we were just always on the road. So yeah. now that we're not quite so, uh, you know, so active, you know, we, we, we do need to kind of put in a bit of time to try and, and also, you know, you want to, you want to, you know, you want to play the songs as well. Yeah. So yes, we do play. We do occasionally, we've conceded rehearsal might be necessary occasionally. Yeah. I've 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 mellowed with age, and there was a time in, when when I was young, when I was I, I used to torture Adrian and um, uh, Adrian and and the, the, the drummers because I used to I just started playing a new song on on stage, but of course Booty is is that still happens because Booty um, hasn't been playing with us for very long, so we play songs which he's never heard on a almost nightly basis. Don't we, Booty? Yeah, that's, that, that's true. Um, uh, I've got um, a good list of songs here. This is what you need to know. So I've, I've got into those songs after I joined the band. Uh, still, uh, uh, almost every night when we play a live concert, um, the two start a song which I've never heard before in my life. So I have to join and, uh, yeah, fight my way through it. And uh, it's uh, very challenging, but it's good fun. It's very good fun. <laughs> yeah. Well, you have to be a really good good drummer to play with the Tiger Lilies, considering the all the songs that they have of thirty five years. Uh, the whole li- yeah. Well, you have to be on your toes. Uh, you never know what comes up next, and uh, you have to prepare a little. Uh, but then, yeah, yeah, it's 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 good fun. It's uh. But it was was it hard for you to get into the rhythm of the Tiger Lilies? Uh, I'd love to say yes. It's horrible working with these two guys, but I can't because they're here and they're listening. <laughs> now it's um, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I can disconnect them if you want to. <laughs> yes, <please. Come> on, <laughs> now it's um, um, well, I'm 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 not um, well. We're of the same age group, so I've got my experience of touring life with other bands. So it, in a way, it uh, for me it went pretty smoothly. Okay, this is the schedule. It's a uh, uh, it's a lot. Uh, uh, but it's uh, it's um, not unusual. No, um, it's it's uh, it's good. 
working. What was what, what was your experience with them? Uh, did it ever happen to you that when you're playing uh, drums and then all of a sudden, like, what the hell is going on, guys? I mean, uh, what you, is this normal for you? I'm, I'm. What? Well, I've played in bands where every note, every beginning, every ending, every speed of every song was um, detailed, uh, scheduled, and it's all never played differently. Um, no, pl no. Uh, place for uh, improvisation. But um, when I started out uh, as, as a teenager, uh, we played in a skiffle band. I don't know if you remember that. There was a craze, a skiffle craze uh, um, in, in the 80s uh, in, in Europe. And uh, so we did that. And it reminds me a little bit of that, having um, really not much experience in music and following the singer and if a singer speeds up okay we all speed up if a singer slows down or makes a break for, um, or adds another verse that's what the band is it's, it's a jazz approach somehow uh, and uh, it's very enjoyable <laughs> And yeah, I mean, the whole band is based, uh, not based, but it has a lot of influences from, from jazz, from, uh, I mean, a lot of improvisation is involved in, in the band, uh, I guess. I mean, I've never been to a live show, I have to say. <gasps> only, I, I've, I've, ever, I've only heard the music as a recording, which is actually really good to listen in the public transport, which, which, which is funny. <laughs> You work for it. Being me a little bit of misanthropic, uh, it's it's perfect. <laughs> oh, I have to try that. <laughs> ah, it's, it's it's absolutely great. The 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 crack of doom or or, or fire in public transport in in a tube. <laughs> it's absolutely great. It's 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 uh, it's. Uh, uh, actually, like when I was thinking about the tiger lilies, how to explain it to the people, I would explain it as. Uh, imagine getting completely pissed one night and then waking up with a horrible hangover and you have all these uh, deities of, 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 of these uh, musicians out there as hallucinations uh, commenting on your daily life. Uh, something like that. <laughs> <laughs> okay. That's my well, personal experience. Well, in a way, um, the band sometimes uh, tells you thoughts you shouldn't speak out, but the band takes over and uh, speaks out a few um, ideas that you can have about other people while riding on a tube. It's your subconscious talking to you in 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 oh. in, um, in, in, in... <laughs> <Dead> silence. <laughs> no, no. Yes, in a way, yes, your subconscious in, uh... is speaking. <laughs> So uh, and I guess you don't do it as set list of, uh, during the the performance. Uh, well, we are kind of running a set list. I mean, it, it's funny. We've kind of gone in reverse. I mean, you know, we've gone from kind of never using set lists to actually using set lists because we, we never really did what in the beginning. And now we kind of almost have kind of gone back to like, you know, that I think just because I think structure and also when you're dealing with so many songs, you know, once you once you get past about 30 albums, I think, you know, if you're going to do a set, it's you probably need to work out what songs you're going to have to brush up on. Though we still do get called out songs um, that we haven't played for 20 years and and sometimes we can pull them off. Like the other day we did Heinrich, which was from Farmyard Filth, which Martin, we haven't played live for 20 odd years. And we managed to do about 85% of it really, which was pretty good. <laughs> well, maybe not 85. 80, oh, okay, 75. <laughs> there was a verse missing, but you know, still... Yeah, so I think we are, so we are using set lists now a bit more, but there's always the potential to throw in a few random songs, and we still ask people for for you no know, for for um, encore suggestions, and we will we will try virtually anything, even if it's only like kind of like you know a verse or a chorus or something like that, just to try. Yeah, I checked out. Uh, there's a service set list that uh, records all the all, all your set lists of the bands that are doing during the shows over the years, and I could see uh, sometimes people were yeah asking for something completely unexpected for the yeah. encore. Yeah, I think we did a, even did we even managed to do a little bit of thousand violins, didn't we? All did, all, we did a bit. Did yeah, we? kind of sort of did. We Just got through the sort of first verse and chorus. First, first verse, yeah, yeah. How do, how does it feel after the COVID? Because it's it was a long time when nobody were playing live. Uh, I mentioned I I read an interview that Martin had to remember some tricks uh, how to perform live, how to deal with the audience. That's what I mean. What kind of tricks do you re usually have? What do you mean tricks? 
I guess something like to warm up the audience or how to deal with the oh, audience during the live performance. Oh, we don't, uh, I don't. Uh, we just start playing, really. Uh, there's no real kind of tricks. Maybe, in that it just, sense. maybe it was just a bit weird being in front of an audience again after so long away. It just kind of took yeah. you time to get used to the kind of the sensation. And you know, Martin's trick used to be just shutting his eyes. That was always his trick, kind of back in the early days. It's like, you know, rather than look at the audience, he'd shut his eyes and just kind of go off somewhere. So we'd be playing in all these pubs and people would be like hurling their fists and throwing things or girls would be, you know, exposing themselves at some points and he'd be completely oblivious. Oh, I wouldn't have minded keeping my eyes open for those bits, actually. In fact, in fact I remember we, we did a gig in um, in the Torture Garden in... Um, in uh, in London, it was a you know, and it's like a fetish um, fetish club, and uh, there was about uh, there were all these girls, and apparently that was it, wasn't it? They were apparently they were all flashing us, and uh, I never saw I never saw a thing. <laughs> but I guess it was not the weirdest experience. I mean, it's a pleasant experience, but I, I guess you went to you were invited to many private shows. Or like birthday parties or shows. I mean, what was the weirdest experience? Yes, there were quite weird ones. I remember being invited by the Rothschilds to play in the, in on the on on the river, and they all arrived in their helicopters, and then and then we we performed to the, we performed to the Rothschilds, and you performed the Crack of Doom for them. <laughs> no, I, I, I performed. A, I I remember I performed a specially obscene set. I went through all the. Uh, I went through all the, um, the, you know, like the the songs and found the, all, the, all the all the filthiest, most obscene songs, and I and I sang them to the Rothschilds, and they were all they were all standing like several, just a few feet away from from me, and um, and uh, and and they were all drinking their cocktails. We had a really expensive PA system and everything, and which was turned down to zero, and uh, and, so, and then we sat, and so I was singing these obscene lyrics at these 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 bankers heads and uh, and they all they all just carried on drinking their cocktails like I wasn't there apart from one old lady who I think must have been the one that was uh, got us got us the gig and she actually uh, cheered loudly at the end of the first song but then shut up because because uh, nobody else did that was a strange one yeah it's pretty strange on all kinds of levels probably i mean i uh, i can't imagine i mean there are so many questions regarding that but uh <laughs> i mean i hope they paid well oh they certainly did it would be it would be funny if they pay, paid not really well or the arch <laughs> but we weren't allowed we weren't allowed to uh, we weren't allowed to mix we weren't allowed to uh, we had to we had to stay in the kitchen Actually, this was one of the questions I had. Is uh, like you mentioned some time ago that in the beginning you were treated um, as a musician as beggars because you're basking. And uh, at what point did it change? But when you mentioned that, sometimes it doesn't. It it comes back. Mm -hmm. I, yeah, I don't yeah. really think. You know, I mean, I think if you kind of have this sort of persona of a street performance, which is kind of saying that we've sort of seem to have a bit of this kind of. I mean, we never really we busked. You used to bust before the Tiger Lilies, didn't I you? Bust, I bust a lot before the Tiger Lilies, but I mean, the Tiger Lilies yeah. were a busking band that went out and like made its living by playing on the streets. I mean, we we kind of had an air of it, if you will, but but people kind of assume that that's kind of what we were. For instance, like when we did Jules Holland's show, they kind of basically said, "Well, there's nowhere for you to stand, so Martin stand on the piano and you guys just stand round it." They kind of treated us like we were because we don't have amplifiers and big keyboards and all this sort of equipment, they kind of assume that you're somehow this itinerant street performer, which is not, you know, the persona def definitely, you know, might lend itself to that, but they don't necessarily assume that you need much because you haven't got much. The simplicity in a way kind of confuses them. You know, I think it's somewhere, it's a bit like the blues guys when they came for the first time to England and they had electric guitars and everyone was horrified. So they came back the next time with like overalls and acoustic guitars and everyone was horrified because they had these assumptions about who this, who they were and what this music was, you know? So I think, you know, if you have a particular kind of character, sometimes you're, a, you can get pushed into an area. Yeah. That's one, what's my next question is like, do you get sometimes stuck in the Tiger Lilies universe, I mean the image of it that you created stuck. over the years. 
No, no, and not stock, but you know, like there's a public, there's a a, a way how people view you. There, so difficult to say whether how people view us. We 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 always try to create a bit of a kind of a confusing. Are we sort of from a cabaret place? Are we from an opera? Is it from a theatre show? Are we kind of like you know street performers? It's circus. You know, we can move quite fluidly. I think between all of those things because we're not one thing we can fit into any different lots of different categories i think easily enough so i think it's actually quite freeing we don't have we're not we're not heavy metal <laughs> you know roni can play heavy metal heavy metal venues heavy metal songs heavy metal you know kind of you know that sort of stuff i mean i think a lot of bands do get stuck in a genre whereas we've never really fitted into any genre yeah you don't fit in any genre you're completely uh on the side but you you have your own voice but it took a uh, quite a while to find it yeah and what kind of people usually come to to the shows it's a wide range of all ages it's my impression their parents are coming and they bring their children 10 years old sometimes maybe they bring their grandparents as well <laughs> yeah that's what i mean is because the the topics that you cover are universal they're not really sp they're not really focused i mean they um you don't comment on the like really current events except maybe the covid albums uh, the 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 songs but there's nothing about the technology or robots or something like this or it's more about the universal feeling about all this yeah no yeah, but i mean a lot of the subjects we deal with are very contemporary poverty crime um you know uh, injustice the, the you know all the political you know movement i think i think you know we are kind of very we're social realists in a sense but not kind of maybe you know social we're social commentators and social realists but we don't kind of like talk about the specific events happening in the news apart from maybe this you know ukraine and uh and things like that and the covid thing was obviously quite a quite a unique thing that needed a unique reaction i think really so i don't know maybe more robots martin need any more robots more science fiction ai <laughs> talk about ai <laughs> That's what everyone cares about. Hey, uh, yes, I didn't even know what that was until about two weeks ago. Hey, hey. I always thought it's Amnesty International. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. well, it, well, it is that as well, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. No, you need to start talking about crypto and AI. Oh, please don't. You know, I already have like enough of that <laughs> stuff at, in, in, in my at my life because I talk about AI a lot. Okay. Uh, uh, but <laughs> no, I need something to escape from, from reality. I want to yes. the, the world of whores, prostitutes, exactly. uh, backstabbing killers. <laughs> all uh, the fun stuff. All the fun stuff. <laughs> that I can listen. That stuff that's been going on for hundreds of thousands of years, not this fly-by-night cryptocurrency no. bullshit. Sex and violence. Sex and violence. Sex and violence and death. That's what you, that's what they want. Yeah. How do I, I mean, it might be a stupid question, but uh, how do you know if the song is good? Like, what kind of reaction do you get from the audience uh, during the live performance? Why I'm asking is, is because you're a different band. You play in a theater, right? For example, I have more experience in rock concerts and I, I can see the reaction from the rock concerts. But mm -hmm. in a theater, especially when it's seated, uh, it's a bit different. What, how do you know what is working or not? Martin? I think you feel it. I think they're... Uh, they're uh... You can tell when the song's not very good. People, you, you, you can feel the energy. They look. They, you start. They start to feel. You can start to feel there was a bit of a. They're not. They don't really react or make any sound. They just sit there, and I think they start to. I think they get. They're, they're a bit kind of. Um, you can feel. I think you can feel. A, not exactly bored. They're not bored. Hopefully, but but they are a bit. A little bit bored. You know. So you know, whereas when you do a good song, the people respond verbally or laugh or you know what kind of uh what's the best reaction you can get from an audience well with us i think the best thing is when they you get the different reactions you know so you you get people and they cry and then they they laugh and then they feel a bit un uncomfortable you know yeah so you make them feel yeah all sorts of yeah i mean the different. best reaction would be you know Lots of people laugh. Some people start a fight, and half people walk out. We <laughs> <laughs> don't start fights quite so much as they used to, but uh, there was a time when we yeah. used to have a bit of that as well. Yeah, is Tiger Lilies a good wedding band? Good what band? A wedding band. A wedding, but we well we I, I, we've done a few weddings. 
And uh, we also did a christening once, but I think that was someone's sick joke. And I think also, I've also read people have us, uh, you know, that several people have said they'd like us for their funerals. Going to hell was a, a particular popular one. So when the coffin goes into the flames, you have going to hell playing. We hope it's going to be a growth market. <laughs> <laughs> playing funerals. You know, I think, you know, the probably our wedding band days are probably slightly behind us now because the, most of our bands probably are probably, you know, either divorced or nearly dead. So hopefully we're going to start getting those, you know, those juicy, um, you know, memorial funerals bookings coming in quite, you know, a few times a year coming up. We had a priest once. He had, he had only he, had, he he was missing a hand and he had a hook where his hand should have been, and uh, he was dancing to dang, banging in the nails. <laughs> that was at a wedding as well. He just he just married the married the couple. Uh, actually, like the, the question uh, I want to ask is like because of the topics uh, that you sing about and the music is about. It's like, do you get some weird people approaching the band and telling the stories <laughs> about their life? I'm pretty sure it happens <laughs> all the time. Weird people. That we had. Uh, we, we had uh, Adrian, the, uh, Adrian Hughes, the, uh, the the original drummer. He used to he we, he used to have this noise. He made this noise every time uh, a strange a strange person was there, and he'd say. It rhymes with butter. <laughs> It all say that. Yes, we've had some weird people over the years. Because especially as we let people, as, 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 especially as we always sign CDs afterwards, so we actually get to meet the people as well. Yeah, I, I, I read your rider. Uh, it's a great rider, actually. It's a great experience. Uh, it, you can see the the story of the band in the rider. And yeah, you you uh, sell merch and you sign CDs after the show. You're always there. That's right. So everyone gets a chance to insult us. Yes, and you have three lagers there. Beers are ready, for, waiting for you. It was a really like. modest rider, actually. Oh, we we used to be more extravagant though. We used to have like yeah. bottles of whiskey on there and everything else like cocaine, cocaine, dwarves, and all sorts. <laughs> Oh yeah, regarding regarding that, it's like uh, you also do a lot of theater performances, and and uh, you played w w in in all kind of uh, places, like a circus kind of uh, performances. Uh, what was the wildest ones? Yeah, but you did a theater one, didn't you? Where they had this limelight, and you were on. Didn't you thought you were going to die because you were doing some theater performance years ago, where there was like big explosions or something? Or <laughs> I can't remember. I'm really, really early, like on your own. It was a solo thing where you'd like some Julian. What? Oh, that one. Yes. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, yeah, that's right. They, 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 it was a sort of a live, um, yeah, sort of theatre thing. And they had, they were blowing up, blowing, blowing things up. And I was wandering around and things were exploding. You didn't like that very much. <laughs> I mean, we had, we did a theatre show in Prague where we had a live pig run across the stage every night. That was pretty weird. Uh, and, uh, and and we started that one by or, or showing our asses, didn't we? Yeah, remember? Yeah, yeah. The, the curtain was drawn, and and, our, and and we all had to show our asses. Poor audience. There was that one. I mean, some of them. I mean, theatre's a bit more. You know, it's it's hard to do something that wild. I think when you've got lots of people and it's a bit more, you know, structured. We did that thing in the castle in Poland, didn't we? Where there was all the woman, the woman in the bath doing Hamlet. And there was little people running around, and you, 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 yeah, it was kind of. It, there's, there's always like weird theatre things, but mostly they're kind of very, fairly organised. One of the one of the shows was all about um, children, and they all they all, um, you know, did uh, mild misdemeanours, and uh, I used to scream dead. Every one of them died at the end. I used to scream dead at the audience, and then we did that in um, in, in um, Chicago just after um, 9-11. and I was like screaming dead at the audience every night, and uh, they didn't like it much because they're all you know they're all in shock from the uh, from 9-11. and uh, that was one of our greatest. Um, theater triumphs was it uh, when you t tell me about your experiences it's, it's you don't know if it's part of the song or it's your life it's like it's so mixed together i guess yeah I, 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 i agree with that i mean you've been in the show business for a long time and you've seen a lot and you've learned a lot what what you wish you could could have known when you started oh god that's a Go on, Adrian. Have you got any ideas? I could, I could say, um, to start it off, maybe, uh, I could say, 
I wish I had known how much a show can. You're on stage, you're doing your show, and then you're done, and you you smile a little and sell a CD. But they've just experienced so much, and they want to tell you immediately, and they open up their heart, and you get the full life story in one minute, and then you get. I go home depressed and busy in my head of what I just heard. Uh, nobody, nobody repa um, repaired. Anyways, prepared me for that. Uh, so I wish I had known or learned somewhere to deal, to handle those moments where people, um, yeah, open up to you and you don't, in a way, that's not what I came for, but that's life. Um, you move them and they want to give you something back. And here's my life. It's all spoiled. Do something with it. <laughs> <laughs> Adrian, did you learn anything? No. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I haven't learned anything in my, in my, in, in my long musical career. I've learned nothing. I think I know, I, know, I know less now than I did before, and yeah. uh, I think I'm kind of okay with that. I think there's, uh, yeah. I think you know, obviously, when you're young, you kind of have preconceptions. I think the only thing uh, I think the only thing you can learn after a while is don't bother having any. And the one thing I did learn, I think I have learned, is like some things. Not most things are not forever. You know, you're not going to keep. You know, you should be grateful when you are doing something because you might not do it ever again. You know, we used to go like we used to go places and we never go to them again or we did shows and then we never do them again there's a sort of sense of that kind of awareness that you know that things are quite fleeting sometimes is something you kind of assume that you're going to keep doing go you like you go somewhere you like you know oh i'm going to go back there again and again and again and then you then you never do or you see some people and you never see them again and stuff so i think there's a certain it's not fatalism but i think there's just awareness that when you are doing something good it is good and you should be aware that it's it's good and accept that it won't necessarily be going to happen again in some sort of way or another. And maybe something to watch out for, for like because I'm I'm trying to ask questions. Like I want I want experienced musicians to share a little bit of their knowledge if they could uh, for the for the starting musicians. Maybe something to watch out for in the show business. When when you start out, it's also very special, and you, you know you you don't realize because it's probably quite hard but it is very special when you especially when you're starting out because it is kind of most exciting time you are going to be kind of more have more fun you know in the initial stages than you are probably going to do once you actually if you carry on past a certain point you know it is going to be probably more of a laugh you know we used to have a great laugh driving around germany with you know in, a, in an old ambulance freezing to death you know, in the 90s and then going to the Czech Republic and, you know, all these sorts of things and, you know, sleeping on floors. It's all great to laugh. It really is good and very special. And also the special is also the time you do it is usually quite special. You don't realise that, you know, 20 years later, that time is going to seem like something kind of very exotic to people. You know, they think about the 90s now and 2000s as some, some exotic period where you know things weren't as you know didn't have mobile phones and you didn't have you know all this kind of technology and it was kind of you were free to kind of you know be a, a, live a different way who knows what it's going to be like in 20 more years time when people are uh, musicians are kind of going around they might look at this as some sort of golden era where you know the internet was free and you know you didn't have to have a chip put in your head i don't know <laughs> who the fuck knows i don't know I mean, I just think, it's, yeah, it's just, you know, young, I mean, it's, it's hard. When you're young, you always think that everything's like, you know, it's kind of annoying and, or it's, you know, it's going to stay the same and it doesn't. I think it's important to know if you're, if you're starting out as a musician, um, that's, that's what I've learned. Every night is, is, is uh, this one night only. And once you, if, if you play um, only 50% or you feel bored while you're doing the gig, that's not for you then. It's the wrong band or you shouldn't become a musician. Um, you need to play. 100% or even more every night. Um, otherwise, the audience feels it immediately. If you're just playing half-heartedly, they, they realize and they, you don't get the response. And that's, then it's not worth it. They might have paid money for it as a young musician, that maybe they haven't, but they're still there to be enthused, to, to, to have something, to experience something. And if, if you don't give them something to experience, you shouldn't be on stage, maybe. Hard to give it. Have to give it all every night. Great advice. Uh, all right, guys, I don't want to bother you too much. Uh, the shows in Ap uh, in Vienna are happening in April 13th and 14th. Yeah. Uh, everybody should buy tickets. And in the end, I always ask if you could give me a song, in your case, the Tiger Lily song that should play at the end of the episode. Which song is a good introduction to the band? This is Banging in the Nails by the Tiger Lilies. <laughs>
Thank you, the Tiger Lilies. And thank you, dear listener, for staying till the end. Don't forget to follow this podcast if you dig it. More stuff to come. Until next time. Bye.